Hello every nation global family. This is Ronald from Kampala, Uganda. I want to begin by saying Mukama Yevazwe. That is to say, praise the Lord. So you respond by saying Amen. I hope you're enjoying your week of prayer and fasting. As a global family, we continue trusting God for miracles. This year, 2023, we are trusting God that miracles will happen because we know that miracles still happen. May the Lord perform miracles in every home, in every church, in every household, until he's known to the ends of the earth. So, but today on our day three, we want to trust God for a particular miracle, a miracle of provision. For sure, when we read our Bible, we can tell that God has performed miracles before. We, the Bible is full of miracles of provision from God. God works in many ways that we cannot see. Some of them actually, sometimes when we read about those stories, sometimes they sound like it's not possible. And that's exactly why you're calling them miracles. Think about the children of Israel when God will provide food from heaven and it will fall down. And in the morning they can find food to eat. Think about Elijah when the bird, God would use a bird to provide for the needs of Elijah. Or he would even use a widow, a widow moreover meeting the needs of a man of God. Or think about in the days of Jesus when he wanted to pay taxi. And he was with Peter and he told Peter, Peter, go and get a fish and get money from the mouth of a fish and God would pay the tax for Jesus <laughs> and Peter using the fish. Think about that. So we can all agree that God meets our needs in a supernatural way. And that is what we're trusting God this year. But there is a particular passage I want us to focus on so we can see how God has always provided or how God provided to that early church of the apostles in Jerusalem. Maybe it can also, we can pick lessons and we trust God. Maybe this could also be one of the ways that God wants to meet our needs this year, 2023. So let us look at the book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 32. It says this, now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own. But they had everything in common, and with great power the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them. For as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Thus Jesus, who was also called by the apostles Barnabas, which means a son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, sold a field that belonged to him and bought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet." Think about that early church, how God met their needs. God met their needs by using the church itself to meet its own needs. Using the people around. The Bible says that these guys brought everything, everyone, whatever you had, you brought it on the table, you brought it at the feet of the apostles, and the apostles distributed it, depending on whichever uh, need you had. And everyone brought something on the table, and you would bring what you have and then go back with what you don't have. Think about that. So I am praying this year that we can have a church where everyone is bringing something and then you go back with what you don't have. Maybe that can also be one of the ways. And the Bible says in verse 34 that they did not have even a single person who had a need amongst them. This is a miracle of trust in God this year that we will not have even any needed person amongst our family members. We will not have even a, a needed person in our church. That we will not have even any needed person. Okay, I don't know how big your church is, but think about a church of 5,000 people. That even in a church of 5,000 people, we will not have even any needed person amongst us. And God is able to do that. But this church was going to meet this need using the environment that was provided. So also, as we're trusting God for this miracle, there's another miracle that I want us to trust God for in this passage. The Bible says that this church was a church of one soul and one heart. They had everything in common. I am praying that this year, 2023, our church will be a church of one heart, one soul, and we have everything in common. It looks very hard and difficult, and that is exactly why you're calling it a miracle, unless God does it. Let us also think about this guy called Joseph. Joseph, actually, the apostles gave him another name, Barnabas, a son of encouragement. He went and sold his land and bought money at the apostles' feet, and they distributed it. I am praying this year that God would use some people like Joseph, would use people in our family to say, whatever I have belongs to all of us. My car is our car. My house is our house. My land is our land. My money is our money. 
I am praying that this year, 2023, God would use people in our family to meet the needs of the family. May the Lord provide until we come to a level to say we do not have even any needy person amongst us. I know it is hard, but it is possible because that's we are trusting God for a miracle. If it has ever happened in this church, may it happen in every church, in every home, in every family that we do not have any needy person amongst us. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we pray as a global family, we are gathered in different nations, but I pray, Lord, that this year, 2023, we may experience your provision in a supernatural way, that you can meet our needs using even our own people in our own family, that we can love to share, we can be a family with one heart, one soul, and one mind, giving that we can have everything in common. Will you use every person in our family to provide until everyone in our family, no one has a need in Jesus' name. Amen.